What is the most powerful determining factor in our weight? If you answer genetics, you are correct. Uh, so genetics, obviously, as we all know, genetics is what gives us our hair color, genetics is what gives us our height, our eye color, the way our lips are shaped, everything about us, our skin color. Genetics determines so much. So it only makes sense that it's going to play a very, very big factor in our weight and our body size. And that is very difficult to accept, right? Hi, I'm Stephanie, my name, Hi, I'm Stephanie. My name, oh my gosh. Okay. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a therapist on Long Island, New York that specializes in the treatment of eating disorders and body image issues. Um, so let me just talk a little bit more about genetics right now. So we know that genetics plays a huge role in determining so many different factors of our bodies, of our mental health, of everything that um, composes us, right? So the first thing, let's think about physical conditions that are, um, you know, maybe a lot of people think that, for instance, heart disease is a lifestyle induced uh, lifestyle factors induce having heart disease or not and while that may be true and that is true not denying that uh, but genetics is a big player on that as well so while you can have heart disease or a heart condition without it having been in your family prior and that might be due to whatever um, just happened within your body it might be due to lifestyle factors uh, but you might also have heart disease even though you feel that and you do really make a conscious conscious effort to make sure that you're feeding yourself very nutritionally you exercise you do all the things that you're supposed to be doing you don't smoke you limit drinking all that and you may end up with heart disease anyway yes does that sound like the cards are stacked against you sometimes that might be the case uh, or feel like the case at least so you can't outrun you can't um, out eat genetics uh, if genetics has something in for you that's going to be the ultimate thing you can help prevent Things. So let's say if you have heart disease running in your family, that doesn't mean that you should just outright just ignore that and not take any efforts to try to prevent the disease from occurring within you. However, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you, you trumped it. Um, so yes, you should make sure that you're eating nutritiously more often than not. You should try to avoid lifestyle factors that may make it uh, more likely to develop uh, heart disease later on or whatever the disease in your family that, run, uh, that runs in your family is um, making sure that you're limiting those types of behaviors or lifestyle choices that can impact that negatively and making sure that you're increasing the positive factors that can help to avoid the disease. Um, so all that to really say that genetics, at the end of the day, it's such a huge impact on our lives and on our conditions mental health. If you've also had people in your family suffer from depression or anxiety or OCD, you're more than likely to have, um, you're more than likely to, de to develop it uh, and you have genetic predispositions to cause you to um, have those types of mental health issues as well. Which is why whenever you go into an intake for a therapist, um, for a therapy appointment, they're going to ask you about any mental health illnesses in the family um, because it could be really helpful for us in tool in use of diagnosis and also just knowing what you're dealing with in your family as well as what you might be dealing with um, on your own. Um, so now let's get more into body size. I've mentioned uh, Ashley Graham in a prior video of mine. Ashley Graham is a plus size model um, and she spoke a lot about how she felt very, like when she was a young uh, teenager, she really did not like her body because her, bot her body was more bottom heavy uh, and she tried all she could to try to get rid of that and to try to make her body more the shape of an ideal person according to society. Um, but she learned very early on that you can't do anything about it. In some points, that is just genetics determining it. So genetics may be um, causing your body shape, which is something that maybe you don't really like and you want to change. Genetics may be causing where you're gaining weight or where you lose weight first and last. Um, genetics may you know how big your stomach is versus your thighs and your proportion and that's just sometimes the way it is and I know that's so hard to hear because we always want to think that we have a solution to the problem and it, that's one of the problem is is that you're viewing it uh, you're viewing it as a problem uh, but that's something that therapy can work on but two also it's really important to figure out how to accept that and I know that's so difficult um, so now this is a time for the first DBT skill that I'm introducing 
introducing in a video called Radical Acceptance. So what is Radical Acceptance? It basically is exactly what it sounds like, except radically accepting something. Um, so that could be, and that's a really good tool for so many different things that let's say um, you got into an accident and you have um, some disabilities that limit you from doing the things that you want to do in your life and um, at this moment in time you're not in the place that you could be doing those types of things it's really important that as opposed to letting that get you down and hurt you further is to radically accept it that doesn't mean you love it that doesn't mean you even like it it just means that this is how it is and that by not accepting it, you're only hurting yourself. There's no benefit to not accepting it. So basically that concept is that this is how it is. I know that that doesn't mean that, it, let's say if it was an event that happened to you, maybe you were mugged and you were um, hurt or something like that. It doesn't mean that that event never happened or that that event hasn't impacted you or shaped you in some way in your life but radically accepting that means that it happened there's nothing you could do about it and that doesn't mean that it's any less validated it doesn't mean that you can't have feelings about it it doesn't mean any of that but not accepting that it happened and not accepting that that that's something that you do have to live with it's something that can really just be so detrimental to you and again i really want to emphasize Sorry. Um, so I just really want to emphasize for that particular event, let's say if you were hurt in some way, by radically accepting it, that does not mean that that event occurring was okay. It does not give it less credence that it happened. It does not take away from it happening. It does not take that experience away from you. So it's really important to recognize all of that. But radically accepting it doesn't mean get over it. Radically accepting it is okay, this is my life, this is what I had to deal with, this is what my life is given right now and I need to figure out how to work with it and accept it and move on with my life for my best well-being. For my mental health, for my physical health, I need to move on from this and I need to be able to accept it. Now when it comes to body size, there's a point that we're, our genetics are going to be the ultimate uh, determining factor in how we look and how we are shaped. Um, not to say that I know that people will say, yes, you can change the shape and you can change your body size. You can, but to a certain extent. Um, genetics will all um, have the ultimate say over any action that you can choose to do. Um, so when it comes to body size, how does radical acceptance work? Let's say, I mean, let's let's think about it this way. Do you feel that not accepting your body is really getting you anywhere? Is it helping you do anything, really? Think about it in healthy terms. Is it helping you in any positive way? Or are there other things that might be able to help you better achieve your goals or better achieve that um, what you feel like you want? And I'll talk more about the body acceptance in my next video uh, because that's a whole other topic in and of itself. But we have to learn how to accept that genetics is going to be the ultimate say in how we look. We cannot outrun that. We cannot out-eat that. It's something that we really need to start to deal with and learn how to work with. Um, so today I want to challenge you to radically accept that your body is the way it is. Um, and that doesn't mean that, again, that you love it, that you want to um, live this way forever. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden you have decided that you're never going to change your body in any way, shape, or form. It's not body complacency and that I'll talk again about in the next video. But today, I want you to figure out how you might be able to implement radical acceptance in terms of understanding this and letting it be in your life so that you can move on with your life in the best and most healthy fashion. Um, so a more lighthearted comment today, I'm going to ask you to comment down below, who do you think you look more like? Do you think you look more like mom or do you think you look more like dad? Uh, so if you like this video, please like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, I wish there were two thumbs up, that'd be cool, but one thumbs up, I'm sure will do the trick. Uh, if you like this type of content, learning more about eating disorders, eating issues, body image issues, general mental health and well-being, therapeutic tools that can help, uh, please subscribe to this channel. I talk more about all of that stuff, and I hope that is something that you are inclined to do. And if you're interested in learning more about this type of stuff, I also offer a blog. I will link that down below in the description. Please feel free to check it out if it's something that you are interested in. Um, and I hope that you have a really great rest of your day and that you can radically accept how you, um, the way you look. All right. Have a great day. Bye.